View slots are a great way to design reusable components using the slot element to serve as a distribution outlet for different types of content. Okay, what does that mean? Basically, we can use slot elements to let a component accept any sort of template content, allowing us to make more general components and cut down on repeated code. This makes a lot more sense when we look at an example. Let's say that we have a component called my button, and in its template, all we have is a button and a slot. When we use this my button component, we can create it like this with some template code inside. In this example, the code inside is just some text that says click me. When this component renders, the slot will be replaced by click me. And this is how slots work. They allow us to inject template code into a child component. And they work with all sorts of template code, not just plain text. In our example, if you wanted to pass a div with some links, our slot would work exactly the same and replace slot with all of this code. As you can imagine, this can be a very powerful way to eliminate duplicate code and organize your view project. Okay, let's see exactly what this looks like by building our own example. For example, we're going to be creating a content area that allows captions. This caption can be used for more information, citing sources, or really just anything you want to put. So let's create a new view component called caption content. And then inside our app.view component, let's import our caption content in our script section and then render it inside our template section. All right, now we can go back into our caption content and start creating our component. Let's start off with a wrapper div. And inside, for now, we'll put a placeholder image. The link for the exact one I'm going to be using is in the description below. For our caption, since we want to be able to use links, plain texts, or anything really, we're going to want to use a slot. So below our image, let's create a paragraph element with a slot inside. Like we were just talking about, we can pass fallback content that will display when we don't pass anything from our parent. For this example, I'm just going to say caption. So if we don't pass anything, the text will default to caption. So if we hit save and look at what we have, we can see that our app is rendering our placeholder image and caption. Perfect. Now let's actually pass in some values to our slot. So in app.view, we can add content inside our caption content and say source learnview.co. Hit save, and there we go. Our slot is now getting its content from app.view. Again, like we discussed earlier, we can pass any sort of template code to our child component. So let's make learn.view an actual link to the site. And as expected, it's all injected into caption content. The next concept you need to understand is how to use multiple slots inside of your application. Obviously, we want to be able to pass in our content and not just show this placeholder image. So how do we do that? And as you may guess, we can do this by using another slot. So let's head back to caption content and surround our image with another slot element, giving this component two separate slots. If we hit save, we'll see something strange though. Our fallback image is replaced with the same content that we passed for our caption. When dealing with multiple slots, we need a way to differentiate between them, so we're going to have to give them each a unique name. There are two steps to using name slots in view. First, naming our slots from our child component using the name attribute, and then second, providing content to these named slots from our parent component using the vslot directive. By default, when we don't give them an explicit name attribute, like in the examples above, it has a name of default. To give our slot a name, slot elements actually have a special name attribute. So let's go to our first slot and give it a name of content. And then our second one, a name of caption. And that's all for the first step. Now we have to modify our parent component to pass content into each of these slots. We can do this using the template tag. Since we already have the caption, let's start there. Let's wrap all of this source information with a template element and then to make sure it's passed to our caption slot, we can say v slot and then caption, which is the name we gave it. So now our content slot is not being passed anything, so the fallback image is being displayed, and then our caption slot is being passed right through. A pro tip is that instead of typing out v slot to reference name slots, we can just use the pound sign followed by the name like this. This is kind of similar to v bind and the colon, this is just the shorthand. Okay, let's do something similar with our content. We'll create a template element that links up to our content slot, and inside, we're going to pass it another image. Let's use this cute little profile picture of me, and that's my author pick on LearnView. So we'll hit save, and there we go. We're properly using multiple slots. The great thing about this is that we can pass any sort of content. So let's copy and paste this component, and then change our content to be an embedded YouTube video. And by the way, you should definitely check out this video. As you can see, it still works great. Our caption is being passed, and our embedded YouTube video is being displayed. All right, the next concept you should know about is how to use data inside of our slots. So for example, so let's say instead of hard coding our source, we're getting it from our data. Inside script, 
Let's set up a data section with a property called source that's a string saying learnview.co. Then inside our slot, let's replace this hard-coded learnview.co with our source property. This works perfectly. And why, you might ask? Because slots have access to all of the data in the component where they're being implemented. Meaning in our case, our slots will have access to all of the data inside app.view. But let's say that our source data is not in app.view and it's actually inside caption content.view. So let's cut this code out from here and paste it inside our caption content component. If we save, our source isn't being rendered anymore. And once again, that's because our slot only has access to the data inside app.view. Luckily for us, Vue gives us a way to fix this, scoped slots. Simply put, scoped slots allow our slot content in our parent component to have access to data that's only found in the child. There are two steps that we need to do this. First, we have to make source available to the slot content by using vbind. And then second, we want to use a vslot on our parent scope to access the slot props. This makes a lot more sense when we just do it. So first, to make our source available to the parent component, we can bind it as an attribute onto our slot. These bounded attributes are slot props. So on our caption slot, let's say vbind colon source, which binds a property called source onto our caption. And then we want to bind this value to the value of source coming from our data like this. And that's all we need to do inside of caption content. But back in app.view, let's actually get all of this binded data. To do this, we need to add on to our v slot or our pound sign caption by saying equals and then creating a JavaScript expression that grabs our source. And this is getting all of the data that is binded into this specific caption slot. So now when we're calling source down here, we know exactly what we're trying to get. So let's save everything and our app is working exactly as expected. The great thing about this vbind and vslot solution is that you can bind as many properties as you want onto each slot. And then to access them, it works just like this. So all of this information on how to use basic slots, create multiple name slots, and pass data from a child component to its parent using scope slots is extremely useful in creating flexible components. I hope this helped you out, and if it did, please like and subscribe to help support LearnView, and leave any questions down in the comments down below. See you in the next video.